Back again for another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic where we help solve and answer your bike related technical problems so you can get rolling again as smooth and fast as ever. So let's crack on shall we with the first question this week. Oh by the way if you've got a question leave it down there in the comment section below or on all forms of social media. First question this week from Marek Rosa. Hi John, love your content on GCN Tech. Thank you. Uh, I have a Shimano 105 5800 shifters, 105 cassette and 105 Duralia on my cross bike. And uh, I'd like to switch the Duralia to Shimano mountain bike one for less chain slap. Will the shifters be compatible? Right then. Unfortunately, it will not be compatible because Shimano mountain bike levers and Shimano road bike levers use different amounts of lever pull. Now, people out there will say that it works, etc., etc., but we want perfection, don't we? Let's face it. So, there is a solution. It's a wolf tooth tanpan connector. What is that, though? Well, it's a little roller which slots into your rear derailleur where the cable would normally go, so the outer cable, and basically it has a little wheel on it and that is going to give you a different amount of cable pull so it will work. Uh, I know loads of people who've used them and they seem to be really popular in the sort of gravel scene. So go ahead and try that. Alternatively, you could get one of the new Shimano Ultegra RX mechs because that has a clutch built in, so it's not gonna give you quite as much chain slap. Next up is Al Hill, who says that last weekend they got a puncture by a long nail and it left a small hole in the Zonda rim, right in the middle of it. Uh, will the small hole decrease the performance of the wheels? And can Al cover or fix with a kind of glue on the hole? Right, this doesn't sound ideal and it sounds to me like the rim strength is actually gonna be compromised if you've put an extra hole in it that's not designed to be there because there's gonna be no sort of reinforcement around it and it's not gonna be designed in that way whatsoever. Personally, and this is my paranoia totally taking over me, I wouldn't ever use that again because it's not gonna be structurally sound and I'm pretty sure the manufacturer is gonna agree with me on that. Uh, now, you haven't seen any photos of it so I can't really assess the damage but it does sound like it's, well, a write-off sadly. Sorry about that one out. Now we've got Scott Bolton with a question. Uh, now Scott has got himself five and a half bikes the half comes from the front end of a tandem, uh, but the downside of this is that some don't get ridden as often as they should, particularly the folding commuter. After a few weeks, the chain lube can get a bit thick, even if it was put away clean. What's the best way to treat a chain if there's a chance it will not get used for a while? Right then, Scott, good job there because you've put them away nice and clean, but make sure they're absolutely gleaming so you can eat your dinner off of the top tube. Uh, now, don't go ahead and put thick lubricant on there, not wet lube or anything like that because that tends to attract a lot of dust. Instead, put a really light and thin lubricant on there instead. In fact, you could try something like uh, sewing machine oil. I've used that in the past because it doesn't seem to get so sticky and attract everything. It's really, really thin and nice. Importantly as well, cover up the bikes with blankets to stop any of the dust that's flowing around in the air from landing on that chain. And you should be nice and gunk free next time you bring that bike out to play. Now Neil Partridge is next up and Neil is just about to buy themselves their first ever road bike. Nice one Neil, good decision. But however, they want to use 28 millimeter tires and the question is, will caliper brakes always be too narrow and should Neil just look for disc brakes? Or is it not that straightforward and every bike different? Right, Neil, good question. Yeah, bikes do vary hugely from one model to another, even within brands themselves. So, uh, a few years back, almost certainly the top end road bikes, even mid, even low level road bikes, entry level, whatever you want to call them, they wouldn't accommodate a 28 millimeter wide tire. However, times and trends have changed. People these days are using 25s, 28s as standard, and calipers of brakes have been redesigned to be able to accommodate them. So, what I would advise is speak to the dealer who you're gonna get that bike from and ask them to try and put 28 millimeter tires onto the different models of bikes that you're keen to look at and see which ones fit. That's the only way of finding out, I'm afraid. And if they really, really, really want that bike sale, they're gonna do it for you, trust me. Next up is a question from Tarsis, who has had a real nightmare of a time by the sounds of things. For the fourth time, they've had to change their derailleur cable because it keeps breaking inside of the shifter about an inch away from where it actually goes in. Now, they've actually had the shifter replaced under warranty, yet it broke again. Uh, they don't have sweaty hands, so there's no salt getting in there to corrode the cable. What could it be? 
I'm absolutely lost here because you've had a new shifter in there. Initially, I thought it could well be something jammed inside of the shifter that was causing the problem. I was gonna suggest blasting it out with some air or some lubricant, something like that. The only thing I'm thinking is that you're trying to change a load of gears at once without pedaling. So the mech has nowhere to go because the chain isn't moving, so therefore it can't go up the cassette. If anyone out there can help Tarsis, please do let him know down there in the comment section because that sounds like an absolute nightmare and I'm lost for answers with that one for a change. Only thing I can think of, your outer cables, make sure you put ferrules on the end. I can't think that's gonna make any difference. Uh, but yeah, if anyone can help Tarsis, please do. Now we've got a question from Callu who says, John, should I consider replacing my brake cables as a matter of preventative maintenance? Is it a good practice to do so? Uh, they've had the giant TCR with Shimano 105 brakes for five years now and a few thousand kilometers on it. Thanks. Right, another good cable question. And for the low cost and also peace of mind, I would be inclined to do it. Cables don't have a lifespan on them per se. You know, it's not like after so many kilometers, they're gonna fail and they should be replaced. Instead, I replace mine generally about once a year, sometimes more often. Depends on what bike it's on and also the conditions it's been used in. It's better to be safe than sorry, isn't it? I mean, it's low cost to replace it. It's relatively easy to, I would just go ahead and do it because after all, you don't want them to fail because they've been slowly corroding away inside of your bike. Safer than sorry. Penultimate question this week is from Mr. Gadinget, who says they've had quite a few tubes recently with holes inside of them and no apparent culprit. Uh, two while riding after multiple miles down the road and the other appeared the next day with a flat tire. They've inspected the rim and tires closely and carefully with their finger and don't feel any obvious burrs or sharp things. They haven't hit anything hard and everything seems normal. Right, I know you've had a good check but check again, this time really, really closely. And I mean, go inside of that tire and rub your finger around every single bit of surface because it's not uncommon for tiny little thorns or bits of wire to get lodged inside of the tread and just poke through a fraction of a millimeter through the carcass and that is enough to go through your butyl inner tube. So have a very, very good look. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the culprit there. Uh, as well as actually inside of the rim to make sure there's no sharp burrs, no rough edges, nothing like that, any bits of uh, spoke hole, anything like that showing through because that is enough to cause the problem there too. I've had this happen to me in the past and yet you will find a very, very small thing happening. Best thing to do, look at those old inner tubes that are punctured and measure the distance away from the valve where the hole is. Is it in the same place each and every time? If so, measure that same difference on the rim or the tire and look for a foreign object or a bird there. And the final question this week comes in from Block Hacks, who says they have an odd problem whenever they unclick their left foot. For a few seconds, the heel of the shoe is in contact with the wall of the back tire. It's an issue that's wearing out the tire as well as the shoe. Any suggestions? Right then, we actually need to look at what's going on here. So when you're unclipping from your clipless pedals, you actually want to be twisting your heel outwards, so away from the bike. For that very reason, really, you could either damage your shoe, damage the wheel, or worst case scenario, actually lock up the back wheel and you go flying down the road off of the bike. That's not gonna be perfect, is it? So yeah, always clip outwards and you'll be good. Right, I hope that I've managed to answer your question this week in the GCN Tech Clinic. As ever, if you've got a bike-related problem, leave it for me down there in the comment section below. I am so keen to help answer them and solve your problems. Please, please, please. I love it. And now, remember as well to like and share this video with your friends, and also check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now, for another great video, how about clicking just down here?